what's up so today I'm going to show you how to make biochar this piece right here is your inner retort now over there I got a 50 gallon food grade barrel that would be the outer retort I'm going to cut up a bunch of oak scrap wood that is untreated heat dried now if you choose to use old pallets I recommend taking all the nails out and also make sure that your pallets are stamped on the side with the letters HT, which stands for heat treated. You don't want nothing that's chemically treated, you know, anything bad like that does not make good biochar and it's not gonna benefit your garden soil. It's not gonna benefit your animals when you feed it to them. Biochar has a lot of benefits when it comes to in all honesty, humans, animals, and your soil. So let's get started. Now what I do is I cut these uh, pieces down to about six inches you ain't got to measure it just eye it doesn't have to be six can be seven can be eight it's all good you don't have to be precise well that did not sound good i don't know why i did that there's no nails at all in this wood the only thing i can think of is I got about five extension cords running from the garage all the way out here. Loss of power, presumably, you know. I also recommend you wear eye safety protection. Watch your fingers. You don't want to lose any fingers in this. Um, you can find this stuff at your local sawmill. I get mine for free from a guy who makes uh, oak wooden stakes. Um, these are all the defect pieces. Now, if you do find someone who does that, um, it's best to get it in the spring or summertime because for people who know about this stuff in the wintertime, it's really hard to compete against a lot of just regular homeowners who know about sawmills like this and they go there just to get this stuff for free or pay a couple bucks. And they use it as firewood for bonfires, you know, cook some s'mores with the family, which is all good. I myself like to give back to the land and make some good old homemade biochar. Uh. We got about a thousand pieces like this I need to go through, but I don't think we'll get to all of that today. There's nothing like the smell of fresh cut oak. Mm, yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I also want to give a huge thanks to Mark Baker of Baker's Green Acres. Without him i would not be doing this right now it's because of his knowledge and his teaching skills on making biochar is what's making this possible for me today right now of, of making my own homemade biochar i've already made one big coat of biochar already earlier in the season and my first go around at it, it came out flawlessly. I could not have been more happier. I even tasted some pieces. Folks, this stuff has no taste. It's not gonna kill you, it's non-toxic. And I wanna say, people use it on their teeth to help whiten their teeth. So it has just numerous benefits. A piece this size, once when you cook out all the purities, you can probably host a million microbes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Amazing science. Learn it. Do not have to.
to go to your local hardware store and buy that 1010 fertilizer. Trust me, folks. If you want to feed healthy veggies to your family, go the organic, all natural route. It's best in the long run, my opinion. All these fertilizers and chemicals is what's help. It's help. It's helping break our food system. You know, my opinion. You guys can disagree. I think it's one of the links to a lot of cancers these days. So we're trying to break that cycle now in our household. Um, yeah, I admit we don't eat the healthiest, but we're getting there, we're working on it, and I couldn't be more happier. I cannot do anything without just chickens just rolling up on me, trying to be a part of the project. As you can see, we got Blackbeard, we got some Easter Eggers. Huh? We got turkey, we got our buffs. You gonna peck my hand? Oh, oh turkey cam. Turkey cam, chicken cam. Chicken cam, oh, you see your reflection. So yeah, as you can see, all the helpers showed up, except for Papa Guinea's guineas. They're down there with the ducks. Enzo was up here. I'm getting kind of concerned because I'm up on top of the garden area. Um, I'm afraid he done rolled out somewhere. I hope he didn't wander far. I've been calling him, getting kind of worried because we got a road roughly 200 yards from here we'll see back to cutting some more wood all right so we got an enzo update I have found Enzo. He was cowarding down next to the garage, the garage door. I guess he is scared of the sound of the saw is the only thing I can chalk it up to, but he has been found. I have my helpers up here. Crazy chicken guy. Am I? Nah, can't be. I talked to the chickens. So we got our, our bricks here, if I can find them. We're gonna put these underneath the retort. Um, we're gonna have three points. They're about two inches thick. I hope it doesn't create too much of an airflow. If it does, the wood's gonna burn fast. It's gonna emit a lot of smoke. Um, and there's gonna be a chance that the wood doesn't cook all the way through. Um, on the first run, I noticed that on a, just a couple pieces that weren't cooked all the way through, and that's okay. That's gonna happen. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be our, you know what, this might be our third go around. You know what, it is our third go around in making biochar. So, the first two go arounds I used pallets. Like I said, you always make sure that your pallets has a stamp HT on them. That, mean, that stands for heat treated. Get that. Make sure all the nails are out. Very important. Um, chicken shot. <laughs> um, so yeah. Now the next step is I'm gonna haul all my cut pieces over here, fill it in around the sides. Um, I'm gonna put the, uh, the blocks underneath first, otherwise it's gonna get extremely heavy to lift up. So 
It's bad enough I filled up the inner retort and that was pretty heavy bringing it over here and lifting it up into the 50 gallon barrel and positioning the uh, the angle iron underneath. That took a couple tries. Look at them. We got turkey, we got billy bob, we got freckles. Now if y'all haven't seen Bubbles yet, Bubble is our Bantam Cochin. She is by far my favorite chicken. She's very tiny. Caroline named her Bubbles because she is just completely round. Um, but yeah, I think we have become the crazy chicken family. Um, I admit, I love my chickens. I didn't grow up around chickens. Um, I uh, pretty much had the upbringing of White House on the Hill. You know, I didn't grow up around farming. Farming found me. And if I could, I would do this full time. Without a shadow of a doubt, I would do it full time. And I know I could generate a lot of money doing this. It may take a year. But when you have that drive to be successful in farming or homesteading, you know, you can accomplish anything. And I think I, I know I know I have that drive. It will happen, you know, eventually. This past year we took things really fast. So this year we're gonna put the brakes on a little bit. We got piglets. Um it's expected come springtime, that's gonna put a hurting on us. We'll be uh, rookies in that too. I think we got four piglets sold already. Um, two of which are going to a extremely, extremely popular YouTuber. I'm not gonna reveal the name yet, um, I'll let you guys take uh, some stabs at it. Good luck on that. I can guarantee you, you will not guess the name. All right, let's get to work. All right, so we have the retort filled up to the top. I got newspaper crumbled up lightly, and I have some bridging going on underneath to get the airflow, get everything caught. That's step number one. Step number two is getting the top on, which, man, I gotta go back down to the shop again. I gotta get the, the clamp ring to go on the barrel. I was just down there. And that's the reason why I went down there. I'll be darned if I have to go down there again. Well, so as you can see, this is the finished product. The barrel weighs about probably 250 pounds uh, maybe 300 pounds I didn't jam pack it full of wood you want some air but there's plenty of wood in there it's probably gonna make uh, let's see here maybe another tote full of biochar which that's probably all what's needed I'm doing a 40 by 50 foot garden to start out with this season last year we did triple that size to start out which put a hurting on us since we Jen and I both work full-time jobs and the kids are in school so let me run back down to the shop and get the clamp ring
product. It's leaning a little bit. That's okay. Got a little bit of smoke that's expected at the start. Looks like we're good. Now with the fire up here, the fire is going to burn down. We got airflow coming in from the bottom going up, pulling the fire down. Plenty of air going into the fire. The woods are already caught. As you can tell, there's barely any smoke. So as you can tell, there's barely any smoke coming out. Sounds like a freight train. That's what you want. The less smoke, the better off it is. It's a clean burn. I like it. Not bad, huh? For, was this my third time I said doing this not bad for a rookie you always want to make sure you got some water on hand just in case stuff gets out of hand I haven't had that problem yet but it's always good to be safe and sorry I can feel the heat just coming off feels really good so as you can see there's hardly any smoke coming out it's very minimal That's what you want. You can probably hear the fire going. The wood has definitely caught down here at the bottom. Air is being suctioned in. All right, so let's take a break from the biochar. As you can see, I got my chickens now they free range, but I got them here in the garden. I trained them to eat in the garden. I wet their feed down. I just toss it around in the garden where I think it needs the most scratching, the most, you know, chicken manure. Um, so as you can see, this 40 by 50 foot area is what we're focusing on first. The chickens have done an amazing job at scratching the stuff up. Um, I took the broad fork and just did a couple areas and the soil looks extremely healthy. I am very pleased with how the soil is looking, you know, from last season. Now last season I did use a tiller. No more tiller. I am strictly broad fork now. I'm introducing more earthworms into the soil, which is going to help. I'm going to introduce more organic matter. I'm going to pull some leaves out of the woods before it's all said and done, before I tarp it. So yeah, perfect. I mean, these chickens have done an amazing job. There's hardly any weeds at all. Um, yeah. I'm pretty happy about this actually um, so I hope everything comes together good this gardening season um, extremely stoked about it uh, Jen can't wait I can't wait the only thing we need to work on is growing potatoes and sweet potatoes um, I did see something on Deep South Homestead he has this uh like a greenhouse box that he's putting his sweet potatoes in very interesting build you guys should check it out um but if we do build something like that that's going to be somewhere way way down there probably down that direction uh it'll be facing south um yeah i cannot wait to get that broad fork out shoot some more video it'd be my first time using a broad fork so i hope you guys can learn with me i'm a rookie i know a lot of you guys are rookies so we all can learn together if i'm doing something wrong please pipe in and give me some pointers but i think i might have it nailed down pretty good so Good job, chickens. 
Billy Bob, Freckles, Bubbles. We name our chickens. Now these are just our laying chickens. We are planning on doing meat birds this spring. I'm going to build two Johnson Scovich tractors. We're going to do about 50 to 60 meat birds to start out for our family, a couple friends. And then from there, if everything goes well, we plan to offer pasture-raised chicken, organic, uh, non-GMO, through a CSA that we do for our chicken eggs. Um, price is yet to be determined. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a great season. I can cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait. All right. I'll be right back. Boom. All right, so the first round of biochar is complete. That's what it looks like after it's cooked. You get that glass sound. You basically just crumble. That's when you know you got a really good batch. Now in here, I got about maybe 10 gallons worth that right there is gold gold for your garden gold for your livestock i mean just look at that it crumbles in your hand and what we'll do a little bit later is we're going to inoculate it i got a masonry tub i got a tamper to crush it up a little bit Got some uh, additives to add to it, and I will show you guys step by step on how I inoculate my biochar. All right, so now we're gonna inoculate some biochar. What you do is you take your inner torque, dump it in like so. Now, this run I ran yesterday. Came out very nice. You take your tamper. Tamp it down. Now you'll find some pieces that didn't cook all the way. We'll toss those to the side. So next, you want to add about three gallons of compost, which here I got organic mushroom compost, which is just going to add a ton of fungi and good bacteria to house inside the biochar. I'm also going to add about three gallons of worm castings and a couple other little secret additives. All right, so let's do the compost. Next, let's get this. All right, next comes the worm casting. So let's measure this out. Now this too is organic worm castings. Mix this in. All right, now I'm gonna add some flour. This is gluten-free flour because we are a gluten-free household. You don't wanna add too much. What this flour is gonna do is feed the microbes. You don't wanna add too much, just sprinkle it in. It's a little windy out here, so gotta be careful. All right, we'll 
mix this in. I can hear the microbes now. If you listen closely, feed me, feed me. Don't worry, microbes. I'm feeding you. Did you hear them? All right, once when that's mixed in, I'm gonna add some molasses. Not too much. This will give, this will add sugar. Again, not too much. Hold up, hold up, baby. I can sit beside you while you're going on about your That yes, should be good. Nothing left you Now my wife tells me that back when she was a kid, her grandparents put molasses on their pancakes instead of syrup. Now I've tasted this molasses firsthand, just by itself, and it tasted horrible. I, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. She said it tasted great. I, I don't know how, but it's awesome. All right, let me grab the hose here. Now we're gonna add our water. And we're gonna let it sit for 24 hours. Now once when you're done adding the water, you wanna stir it in really good and you wanna stir it about two to three times within that 24 hour period. Some people like to leave it marinate for up to a week. Um, I'm just gonna let it marinate for 24 hours or so, maybe a little bit more. But in that time frame, I'm probably gonna stir it about 10 times. You know, some people also use a bubbler to keep it going, to get the microbes up and going. But this method is tried and proven as well. I don't have a bubbler yet. Or should I say, the stuff to make a bubbler, it doesn't take much to make one. Here on a homestead, you gotta work with what you got, and that's what I'm doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you listen closely, the microbes are eating. Just makes you want to just eat some. Just pick some up and... It's actually pretty tasty. If you do, if you eat biochar by itself, it has no taste. But I had some good old gluten-free flour, some molasses, and it's pretty tasty. If you want to whiten your teeth, brush your teeth with biochar. That will surely help get your teeth whitened over time. But I'm not a dentist, let me throw that out there. So if you do give it a try, I'm not a dentist, I'm not a professional, so don't quote me. Here you go. Just keep it nice and low. About right there and just keep that. Tell you when. Yeah. Go ahead and kneel down and throw some water in there. Yep. Get a little bit lower so you don't get a splash. Full throttle. There you go. So once when this is inoculated, before I use the broad core. I'm going to add this to each bed, and then I'm going to do my broad pours. And once when I lift that soil up, 
the compost that's in the beds now and this is fall down into the cracks of the soil. Not all of this gonna fall in and that's okay. After all that's done, we're gonna put a solid top over it. Guineas, come on guineas. Sorry about the guineas. We'll tarp it up and just let it marinate until springtime. Hey, come on, I'm trying to talk here. Crazy guineas. Now, I've seen on other YouTube videos, people putting biochar into their garden without supercharging it. Folks, if you do that, trust me, you, it's going to soak up all your nutrients that's in the soil, which de defeats the whole purpose. Now, a year to two years from that point, the biochar would be great because it'll be supercharged. You don't want to do that. You want to supercharge it before you put it into your soil. That way, come garden season, you can get at it. All right, Caroline, it's nice and soupy. Let's add a little bit more molasses to it. Get the microbes, some more sugar. This stuff is stick. Now this biochar is gonna soak up a lot of water. Mm-hmm, it is good. Now can you imagine one piece of biochar houses enough microbes to cover an entire football field? That goes to show you how awesome this stuff is and it works. Now this will be our first year doing it. I've done a lot of research on this and the difference is night and day when you use this in your garden. Now you can also feed it to your livestock, but when you feed it to your livestock, give it to them dry because when they eat it, it'll soak up all or any bad bacteria that's in their stomachs. And when they poop it out, it comes out inoculated, goes down into the soil, good stuff. I feed it to my pigs all the time and my chickens. Now when I feed it to my chickens, I crush it up a lot smaller than when I would feed the pigs. The pigs, I just throw chunks in there and they just tear it up. And it's also satisfying. It's satisfying, huh? It has a good satisfying, like maybe relax. Makes you relax mm -hmm. doing this. Yeah. See, I told you, homesteading is relaxing. So soap video. Soap video. Soap crunching. Soap crunching. Do you guys hear this? Soap crunching is relaxing. It is. Bar it soap. Is. Bar soap. Yep, and then you just like crunch it with a knife. Crunch it with a knife. Yep. Until you cut yourself. All right. special knife. So like, it, it's not as sharp. Now a year ago, the kids knew nothing of this. I was just now starting to study biochar. We're doing this for our kids to teach them to respect the land, to give back to the land, and to grow your food organically non-gmo right have you learned a lot so far yeah you should do a farm video to go like to relax people so we'll do
do now is drag it off to the side. We'll cover it up, but not with burlap. I also seen on a YouTube video of someone using burlap to cover it up. Do not do that. Burlap will soak up any moisture. Yeah, it won't soak up all the moisture, but it'll soak up some of the moisture and you don't want that. I'll probably just cut a trash bag and just cover this up. And just let it marinate. Yeah, even the chickens did eat it, it's good for them. You can also use regular compost. I chose to use mushroom compost. I'm gonna prove to you guys that eating biochar will not hurt you and it's safe. It has no taste at all. Pretty good. Not bad. Ooh. Let's grind it up against the teeth a little bit. Pretty good. Good stuff.